Welcome everyone. Today we are presenting a ZTPF feature called Execution Counting presented by Navin Minati. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the session, please click on the hand raise button so that you will be unmuted to proceed with your question. Now without further ado, we will turn the time over to Navin. Our presenter today is a system engineer who have been associated with TSI for 4 years and overall of 10 years of experience. His forties are regression testing, ZTPF, GI. He has also served as business and quality analyst. He heads the ZTPF, GI customer support team. Now we, now we can take over the presentation. Yeah, thanks, Saukartika, for, uh, for the introduction. And also, thank you very much for coordinating uh, this webinar with various customers today. Uh, appreciate your help. So, um, okay. good morning everyone uh, and welcome you all uh, for today's webinar. Uh, thanks thanks for your interest in joining today's ZTPF GI webinar topic, execution counting. So, for the next couple of minutes, I'm going to talk on this feature. Um, so, the agenda for today would be, let me move on the slide. Uh, hope you all can see my screen. Uh, if you have any technical issues like audio or uh, or seeing at my screen, uh, please place uh, place the message in the chat window, like how uh, Saukartika instructed you. So, um, so the agenda for today would be: we will see what is execution counting. Uh, we'll just talk about uh, what it does and uh, who should be using it and uh, what are the benefits of using execution counting and we'll also see the demo how to use that feature in ZTP of GI while we are doing demo we'll be seeing various options and the buttons within the execution feature and we are also going to see how to manage the execution countings that is mostly on the reporting structure like how do you report how to export it to various formats we are going to see that and at the end, we'll also see uh, the advanced usage of this, like um, uh, how to use to compare the results without your changes, that is a base and after your changes with your new load sets, okay? So that would be our agenda for today. So let's see what is execution counting uh, in ZTPFGI. It is a developer-oriented tool within ZTPFGI suite, and it's a very, very useful feature which allows developers to detect which source lines have been executed and how many times that each source line or all the source lines have been executed for any given transaction. So if you look at the purpose and the benefits, the first purpose, the main purpose I would say, using this feature you would definitely know whether the code which you have written or developed has been executed or not. And also it allows the users to know how many times each line of the code, be it your new code or be it a base code. So you will come to know how many times that each line has been executed. And it also has a heat map coloring system. Also there are some preferences we will walk through while we are doing the demo. So this heat map coloring schema or the system I would say it would benefit the developer or the user to know very easily how often each line was hit at the source level. Okay, And also it allows the developer to detect whether the programs and the instructions within the programs are really being hit all the times or at any expected times while testing. And the most important it facilitates quick detection of certain type of errors such as forgetting the caller function or subroutine in the code. I would say that's very important for the developer. Developing the code and you are not calling the, uh, the function which will be a, a huge error or the big error I would say. So to eliminate this or to overcome these issues, you have a feature called execution counting in ZTP of GI and we can leverage the benefit of this. We can use this in ZTP of GI while you are debugging, right? 
So without any further delay, I would quickly turn to ZTP of GI for a quick demo. So I have the ZTP of GI up and running. And the first thing I will be connecting to the system. So that's the mandate step. So let me choose one system from the available systems here. So just for information, I'm using the internal TSI machines here. So I have connected to a lab called VPZTPF3. It's on the way. It's getting connected. It says connected. And now when you, by the time it gets connected, you will see the tab called system. Under the system tab, you see an icon called execution counting. So we are, the main purpose of this webinar is we are, we are going to concentrate on this icon where you see under the system tab, execution counting. Before I even go into this icon, I will do some prerequisites here. Once you are connected to the system, you will see the load sets tab here, the bottom left, in the left pane. So what I'm going to do, um, I have identified few demo programs for the, uh, for the purpose of this demo. So I'm going to source view log those programs, okay? So I'm going to use the feature add S4 to view here. I'm not trying to load the load sets. All I'm doing is I'm going to utilize the, the programs which are system-wide loaded already in the system. So I'm going to use add S4 to view. So I'm, I'm typing the demo program the internal demo program, TST5. Okay, let me bring up one more program. And TST6. All right, so those are added to the view. So the second mandate step, I will put them in the source view lock. So do a right click, trace in source view. So never mind about this, just click OK. Just give the confirmation to lock it in the source view. So same way I'm going to lock the TST6 as well in source view mode. Okay, so the second prerequisite step is done. The first step, I have connected to the system. You can see the system name at the top here. I'm moving my mouse just for your reference. And the second prerequisite step, I have locked the demo programs here. And the third step, to turn on the execution counting. So how do we do that? So there are a couple of ways. Um, I'm going to show you two ways here. So under the system tab, you have seen the icon execution counting. So there's a little drop down over there. I'm going to click on it. And you see this, this window which has various options here. So the first we are going to talk about turn on execution counting all trace members. And before I turn on, just take a quick look here. And you see there are some other options which are grayed out, which makes sense here. So first we'll turn on, and then we'll come back to the other options a little later, OK? Before I turn on, I just want to show you one more setting here, uh, or the, the view, I would say, not the setting. So here, while you have logged for the source view trace, you see this little blue dots. By now, you might be knowing what, what are these blue dots. You would have figured it out because you have been using ZTP of GI for quite some time. This blue dot indicates that, that these lines, on whatever line you see, that line is an executable code, right? And after that, you don't see any uh, the dark colored background. As soon as I turn on the execution counting, you would see there would be a, a, the blue background bar which indicates or which tells you that execution counting is turned on for you to proceed all right and also just take a quick look on on the tab so i'm just changing the view from tst5 to tst6 so that you can take a look in the screen share you just see the lock symbol right now as soon as i turn on the execution counting you will see the difference you will see one more icon or one more representation there so I'm going to execution counting and then turn on. So as I just explained, you, you will be seeing the magical, the blue bar here on both TST5 or TST6. For the matter of the fact, when you choose this option, turn on execution all traced members, how many programs you have locked for all the, all the programs, you will see this blue bar. You can see TST5 as the blue bar and TST6 as a blue bar. 
and also at the top of the uh, the tab you can also see something like as if you open an editor and there are some coloring lines for that icon and also in the left side of the pane other dst5 and here you see the lock symbol at the background you also see something like a notepad the file icon with the coloring so that tells you that execution counting is turned on so now let's go back to see the other options so now you can see turn on as you already turned on that is grayed out which makes sense and you can see other icons are enabled right now so you can click on any of these enabled options so the turn off will explain um, by the name itself it explains us to turn off the execution counting and you can see at the side it says all trace members when you click on this turn off execution counting, this blue bar here for all the trace members will be turned off. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit um, uh, after collecting some statistics. We'll talk about what is refresh, clear, and what is save, manage, all those things. So right now I'm going to uh, proceed with how to collect the data for execution counting. So we have completed our prerequisite steps. I repeat uh, quickly. So we have connected to the lab. I have loaded the programs I mean it can be loaded or you can use the add us to view feature to log the programs and the third thing I have logged the programs as in the source view trace and I also turned on the execution counting right so now you can stop the or uh, you can uh, execute the entry either using ALC1 if you know the entry you will bring the ALC1 terminal and you can execute the entry or as these are demo programs I will just use create ECD uh, option. In your, just I want to make an uh, announcement here. This window is little new from the one what you might be seeing in your GI. That's because I'm working on the latest ZTPF GI version. Um, you might be seeing the similar view uh, in the upcoming bills. So don't bother about for time being. All you would be looking at this S4 name, this text box will be available for you when you click on create ECB. So right now I'm going to hit TST5 and then click OK and the ECB has stopped and now you can see I'm in the debug tab here and I see run uh, all this trace uh, source view execution trace icons here. So I would click on run quickly. So one more time, it has multiple ECBs over here. Okay. So it says it has completed. Let me close the LC1 for time being. Or oh, maybe I, I still have one more ECB here. Okay, run. Yes, I'm, I'm uh, totally completed with the transactions. Let me scroll down and see what, what it has done for me. All right, see, I'm scrolling quickly down all the way bottom. And now you see some numbers on top of the blue bar. So this number indicates how many times this each line has been executed. So in this case, the MVC instruction has been executed for three times for throughout the transaction. And this WTOPC has been executed for three times. Similarly, you can interpret each line how many times it has been executed, right? The same way, TST5. So for the given transaction, if the program is really being hit, it will, it will collect the statistics and then you can see each line how many times it has been executed. So just for example, for the, for the given transaction, whatever you have executed, if it's not hitting the program, then it is not, you are not going to see this counts. So that will clearly tell us whether the given transaction is really hitting the program or not. If it is hitting the program, how many lines within the program is really being executed? And if it is being executed, how many times each instruction is going on, I mean, is being executed. So these data you will come to know with this feature. That is the benefit of uh, using the execution counting feature within the GI, right? So here you can see um, the full line in the editor is being highlighted. Um, so there's a preference based on your preference, you can change that whether you want the color of the line to be occupied on the, the whole line the editor or you just want to see the coloring just on the left side of the blue bar. So I'm just going to take you to that preference. All you have to do is do a right click on this blue bar. So which will bring you only the options related to the um, execution counting. Okay. 
whereas if you do the right click yes you do see execution counting option over there in the right click on top of the editor but you also see the other options so that's the reason I'm saying to, to keep it simple I would do a right click on the blue bar the left side and now and now you you're going to see the option called execution counting properties also the same option can be seen here here as well under under the system tab execution counting execution uh, execution counting properties so here under analysis tool you see an option called execution counting and here you have an uh, setting which says color entire editor line if you have it checked by default it is checked and that is the reason you see the whole line the all the lines are being uh, colored in the editor so let's see what happens if you uncheck that and then click OK let's see what happens and now you see the difference in the editor the full line is not colored now so only at the blue bar it is colored so it is purely your preference uh, based on uh, individuals preference you can go to the setting and then you can access that although also you can access the same setting from here file tab ZTP of GI options and here you have an option called analysis tool execution counting so there are multiple ways of accessing it whatever is easy for you or convenient for you you can use that right and um, so this is the color scale by default you have four settings the heat map colorings so uh, I think the default one would be the first one and ba again based on your preference you can choose which color you want so you can set it up uh, which scale you want like the second one or the third one or the fourth one so by default I went with the first one okay and there's another setting here automatically clear execution count counts so what does this mean so by default again you would have it checked so the meaning of this is every time you do a new transaction right so it is going to clear your previous counts and then it's going to get the new statistics for your the newly given entry or the newly executed entry so if you uncheck and then click OK what happens is every time you do the entry the actual statistics are getting accumulated on top of this for example you have this entry ex sorry this line uh, has been executed for one let's say you execute it again with that setting turned off so it's going to be accumulated. The one becomes two, two becomes three, three becomes four, and so on. So it, it's going to be accumulated. So maybe that in some of the scenarios it will be very helpful. Like you want to know throughout the day for this program um, how many times it has been hit and this particular instruction how many times has been executed. So if you want to know or if you have the desire in such uh, such case, um, you can uncheck this option. ZTPFGI options, execution counting, uncheck that and then leave it there so you will come to know the results, right? So those are the preferences and now I'm going to show you um, how to turn off. So to turn off, it's easy. Again, you, you do a right click either from here, either from the system execution countings. So you, you know now how to turn off. You, just by doing the turn off, it turn off the execution counting and your counts are also gone. Before I do the turn off, I will, I will always make sure I save the execution countings and then I will also make sure to upload it or, or uh, to, uh, to, I would say here the option it says manage or export data, okay? So let's do the save execution counts first and then we'll see how to manage those execution countings. So I'll click on save execution counts and then you get this little window pop up. By default, the file name would be uh, the system name and the date and time and some arbitrary number at the end. So although you can choose whatever name you want um, because it's a text box, you can, you can put the design name. And also the cool thing is here you have a description here which is, um, which is helpful so that when you're doing multiple iterations you can easily know um, for, which, uh, uh, for which transaction or for, which, uh, for what purpose you have collected this. Maybe you can just put. So, some descriptive name okay I'll just put it like before changes just for an example and then I will use the option save only will come little later save and export what it does save only so the saving is done so it might be lying somewhere so I'm going to show you where it would be so I do the right click on the blue bar again 
So I have an option called manage or export data. I'm going to click on it. So you would get this window here. Uh, I have some old data here. Uh, ignore it for time being. And you see the system name, date, uh, year, month, and date, and some arbitrary number with an extension EXT, EXCT, which is execution counting. And the right pane, you see the description which I just gave before changes and date and time here and the program files, what we have logged for the source view trace and also for the execution counting here. These are the parts from where it has been picked. So the bottom left in this window, you see the option as options with a little drop down over there. When we click on it, you will see, let me drag this little up, yeah. So you will see options, three options there. Excel format, PDF format, and then open in view, uh, viewer after export. So just for our demo purpose, although you can choose both at the same time, export to Excel and export to PDF. So I'll just stick to Excel format for our demo purpose. Although you can try it at your end, uh, it should work the same way, no difference. Uh, it's just a preference, whether you want it to be uh, having the data in Excel or PDF is just a preference. So I. I have chosen Excel format and then let's do the export, okay? So it's going to ask where you want it to save. So let me choose desktop and you can name the file name. I would just leave it to the default here. I just click save. It's trying to save. And as I had the option open in viewer after export, it just opened the Excel sheet for me, whatever we just exported now, okay? So here, the first tab would be summary tab. You have different tabs here. I will talk on the different tabs a little shortly. So the, the first tab, what you see here is summary tab. It says TPFGI execution counts report summary and the data set one and date and time captured, data set file name and system name where you have loaded your changes. I mean, uh, the base changes or after changes, whatever it is where, where the main point is where you have tried, okay, in which system you have tried this. So that's the system name and description while saving what we have given that one. And the SVOs we have logged for the source view trace and for what we have tried to get the execution countings. These are the two SVO names and its source location from where it has pulled. And you can see the file name, TST5, it was ASM and TST6, it was ASM. And you can see the counts. For this program, 47 times the instructions has been executed and TST 684 and together it is 131. And let's, let's, uh, let me go to the second tab which says set one TST 5 ASM. So whatever we have seen in the GI view, let me close this for a second. And whatever we have seen here in the GI view, the same thing, it has been exported to the Excel sheet as is, no changes. So here you can see the blue dot the line, the count, the, the blue dot, as I was talking in the early of this webinar, the blue dot indicates whether that line is an executable code or not. Let me scroll down in this Excel sheet. I'm just scrolling down. Okay, if you see here, the, the row number 132 in the, in the Excel sheet, the, I have some blue dot over here, which says this line, LA instruction is an executable code. And this line number is, is a uh, sequential line number in the source and the count. This instruction has been executed one time. So basically whatever you see in ZTP of GI, it is exported to Excel sheet or the PDF just as is. And uh, let me scroll down for, so that you can take a quick look. And there are some blue dots which says it's executable code, but however, for some reason, maybe it's not, uh, it's not in the path or for some reason, you see the count as zero. So that means for the transaction, whatever we have given, that has not this instructions. So just for an argument's sake, um, you have written a new code and for the transaction you are trying to do, if it is not hitting, but you expect to be hit, hit those lines, then you know you, um, it has not been hit, so something went wrong. So you can go back and then debug your code, why it has not been hit. So this feature will help you in that way. Right. So let me move to the second program. Again, it's the same same thing. So it says set one and the program name with the extension .asm. So it will also be looking at the same way. The blue dots, line number counts, 
and the source code has been executed and let me scroll down you can take a quick look right so the reason it says set one is let me go back to the summary here you have the data set one in the excel sheet as well and let me switch back to the gi view and you really have only one data set here only one load set i would say there's only one so just for argument's sake i can i can quickly show you um let me uh, okay or let me go to the uh, manager export data okay so i have the i have the old files let me try to do export the both at the same time okay let me close this excel sheet for a time being so what i'm trying to do is i'm i'm trying to export both files whatever um, i have executed a few minutes back during this webinar and the one what i have from the previous uh, my old files okay i did a control and then mouse selected on both the files and options i'm going to use the export to excel format and then i'm going to choose export okay so the same way save it it's exporting and then it's trying to open in my excel sheet now you see the data set one and data set two so that means these are the results from the two different files okay and you can see um, this is the old one and i just have it as a before changes which is the new one which we did now so you can do export to an excel sheet or the pdf format the multiple the multiple files at the same time so here you have the summary where it says the files in the data set from my previous execution i have the counts as 47 and the data set 2 uh, which we just did we have the counts as 47 and 84 and you can see the difference and the same thing it has been up uh, it will be uploading from the files from both set 1 and set 2 that is the reason you see set 1 tst5 set 1 tst6 and set 2 tst5 set 2 tst6 the coolest feature here uh, which i really like is it also gives a comparison here so which says set 1 set 2 tst5 it just gives the comparison it compares and then if if it sees any difference like uh, some code is missing or some some code is added newly uh, although i haven't added newly here but it's it's just going to upload in the compare view you can see it if there is any new lines added it would be blank on one side where it is not there and it will be colored with a thick color where the new lines are added so it's a coolest feature here uh, at the same time you can compare the code and also you can make sure whether the new code has been executed or not so if, if there are any common file between um, the two sets in this case let me go back quickly to the summary so in this case we have the common programs in both the sets tst5 tst6 tst5 tst6 and that is the reason the compare file has been re, uh, has been produced here if you do not have the the common files before changes and after changes uh, in the data sets whatever you are uploading to an uh, export uh, sorry exporting to pdf or excel sheet these tabs will not be generated however the individual files like set one set two individual files will be there right so this is not limited to asm um, you can do saber talk you can do it to c++ programs as well let me quickly um, load uh, sorry add as to view the c++ programs and you you can take a look let me do add as to view and again i would bring some demo programs here ape4 and i'm going to do trace and source view which is i'm locking the programs let me lock all the programs here all right i have locked all the c++ programs now and i'm going to use the same feature create ecb so i'm going to create an ecb for ape4 program click ok the ecb has stopped and i should see a debug tab shortly it's loading yes yeah, I do see the debug tab and now, oh, I'm sorry, I did not turn on the execution counting. Uh, let us exi exit all ECBs. I'm going to turn on the execution counting. So, uh, I do want to mention this. When you, say, when you click on toggle execution counting, there's a difference between toggle execution counting and turn on execution counting. The toggle execution counting will act as an on or off switch based on the current state, but it does only for the program where you did a right click 
or where the the mouse is focused so right now the mouse is focused on ap ap e4 a1 and you can see just for an example when i do toggle execution counting you would see the blue bar only for this program and you can see the color uh, coloring icon at the top and when i switch to other programs you don't see the blue pro, uh, the blue background line on the left side so that is the difference between uh, toggle execution counting and turn on or off execution counting for all the trace members so let me turn on execution counting for all trace members and now you see the color the colored icon for all the programs and when you switch to different programs you'll see the blue and uh, let me create an ecb now for ape4 all right the ecb is stopped and i see the debug tab now and let me use this run button all right so the ecb has gone uh, i mean has been completed and now let me scroll down you can see the execution counts and let us take a quick look yes i do see counts on all the programs that means this programs has been executed for the given transaction and now to export you can do save execution counts i would just do for c++ program save only and now i do a right click and manage or export data so you see my description here over here cpp program and now i'm going to export to excel format export now save it it should save and then reopen yes now you see i have exported only one file uh, data set 1 and you see uh, the so has all all of its members ap4 and counts for each program and you can see the path from where it has been pulled so you have different tabs each tab for one program and as i have only one data set now you you see there is no comparison and then there is no set to files so any questions uh, saukartika so i think we are uh, done with the demo so you can open it uh, open the session for questions if there are any questions we can take it up okay uh, as of now there's no questions and uh, a gentle reminder to all the attendees if you have any questions please click on the hand raise button so that you'll be unmuted to proceed with your question or you can write straight away enter your question in the question chat box okay there there's a question from uh, fred and uh, is there a way to count execution by other users activation when in a shared layer uh, uh sorry uh, so kartik i am not clear with the question can you come again is there a way to count execution by other users activations uh, in case of when they are in the shared lab yes there, there is an option um yeah uh, i think it's fred from delta right yeah yeah all right so yes you do have an option fred um maybe if you want to unmute you can unmute fred uh, so kartik so that he can ask the questions directly so there's an option um you can use asynchronous feature so you have an asynchronous but although these are the internal tsi options so at your customer uh, systems you might be having a different features maybe you can you will be seeing an option like capture by line data capture by uh, uh program name uh, you will have different options so you can use one of those asynchronous option to capture the ecb and then in the um and then you uh, let me let me bring the alc1 terminal okay. and then under the trace tab you will have the run on option so run off meaning you will stop the ecb when you keep it as a run on as soon as the ecb is trapped it will go i mean it will be executed so that the mandatory step you need to be on the asynchronous trace and you need to have your program logged for the source view trace and also you need to have it at, uh, the run on option turned on so that way you can capture the others other users ecb and that will be executed in your gi session and then it will accumulate the instruction counts in your program okay thank you thanks for and uh, there's a quest from uh, jinwa and i have unmuted you can you just uh, proceed okay. with the question can you hear me yes uh, i was a little bit distracted so i missed uh, how to the activate uh, the 
execution counting. You loaded the program, and then uh, I remember you put the program name in the create the ECB window. Yes. What was actually uh, activated? Uh, Is there no, any entry, entry or the what kind of action is activated? Um, yeah. Uh, see, uh, these are the demo programs, as I uh, explained earlier. So we do not have the entry assets. So that's the reason I have used this oh, option okay, create okay. ECB. But if you have a program for which you know the entry, if you have uh -huh. a demand code, uh -huh. all you can go is instead of using this create ECB, you will go to your ALC1 terminal oh, and then okay. you're going we, to execute your entry from there. Uh, we can make uh, the entry in uh, this screen. Okay. Right, right. Okay. And uh, I saw the counts in the result. Is it uh, total count of the all the instructions? Uh, uh, results where? Uh, uh, sorry, I, I missed the last part. Results in. So let me yeah. go back to the summary page. Execution counting results. Yeah, the count of forty-seven yeah. or eighty-four. Yeah. So this is not something unique. Uh, it's an accumulated count. So so here it. For these two programs, for, for an example, you have 47 okay. counts for TST5 and zero counts for TST6. So which is the sum of is, uh, all the instruction lines? Um, yes. Uh, so for example, if I go to the TST5 here, so it's a count of all this together. It's not an unique count. Oh, OK, OK. All, all the lines, right? Uh, all the lines. I mean, wherever you see the count. Yeah, for mm -hmm. all the lines. Correct. Is there any way to count uh, the program, the hitting count, not uh, the all the lines, uh, just the program hitting count? Can we see mm -hmm. that count? I mean, uh, for uh, not very sure if I uh, understood your question correctly. But uh, I my, like question, to... my question is that uh, a certain uh, the instruct uh, a certain entry is mm -hmm. go through the, the, the several program. So right. when we want to know the which program is a hit uh, how many times, can we see that count? Um, not through this feature, but uh, yes, certainly you can use the feature called ZTREX. Uh, is it different feature? feature? Yeah, it's a different feature, ZTREX. You can use that. Oh, OK, OK, I got it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. OK, I mean, there's a question from Bob McQuinn. And the question is, does this just for RT code, or does it include CP instructions county? Uh, OK, uh, hi, Bob. Um, I'm not very sure whether um, so if I'm not wrong it is it is all the application code um, so let me see uh, so Katika, do we see Ashok on the call uh, no uh, Ashok hasn't joined yet uh... okay um, so Bob uh, as far as I know it is all the application code not the CP uh, but I would uh, I would find out and then get back to you on that okay okay, okay thanks thanks Bob do you see any other questions? So, no, at the moment there's no questions. Sorry. Okay, let us, give, let us give a few more seconds, uh, Sarkartika, so that let's see if yeah. there are any questions. Yeah. If you have any questions, please click on the hand raise button so that you'll be unmuted to proceed with your questions, or you can enter your question in the chat box. Uh, now, when it looks like we have answered the questions, uh, thank you, Nami. Yeah, thanks, Sarkartika. And thanks everyone for joining. Um, so, Katika, you have any housekeeping instructions before we draw? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have a thank you note. Uh, thank you everyone. We appreciate you being here. A short survey will, will open up. You can specify topics for the upcoming webinar session. We will send you webinar follow-up email within a week's time, which will contain the link of this recorded session. If in case of any queries, contact customer support executive or write to productsinfo at tpfsoftware.com. Thanks again for joining us today and we have webinar followed up on second Wednesday of every month. I will see you next time. Thank you.